Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for this webinar. Today, we'll explore lessons learned from a gender transformative program implemented by faith-based organizations in Bangladesh. Mm. We'll get started in a few minutes, but feel free to introduce yourself in the chat box. Tell us where you're from. Hello, Esther. Hi, Karen, Linda. Hello, Kasapo, Milton. So we're gonna wait a couple of more minutes uh, as while people join. Could you do to introduce yourself, please? Okay, so uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And welcome to today's webinar on improving health and gender equality among very young adolescents. You will see a slide with instructions in French and Bengali to join the language interpretation channels. If you look at the bottom of your screen, there is an interpretation button to select French or Bengali as needed. Hi, my name is Lisa Talukdar, and I'm the Project Management Specialist at USAID Bangladesh and the Social Behavior Change Point person for the Mission Health Team. And it is truly my honor to be here today. So today's webinar is convened by Christian Connections for International Health, or CCIH, in its role as the faith engagement partner on USA's Momentum Country and Global Leadership. As you may know, Momentum is a five-year program aimed at increasing the capacity of partner institutions and local organizations so that they are able to deliver quality, evidence-based, maternal, newborn, and child health services, voluntary family planning, and reproductive health care in USAID partner countries. We'll, uh, we will hear briefly from each of our speakers and we'll, we have three speakers today. And as we go along, I'm sure you will have questions for them. Please use the Q&A box uh, on Zoom to type in your questions and the team will answer them. And if your question is for a specific presenter, please indicate that along the question. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the CCIH YouTube channel and also on the CCIH website at cch.org under events and webinar recordings. You will also get an email with the link for the recording after it's posted. So before we start, let me just say what gender equality and women's empowerment means for USAID. Gender equity and equality, as well as women's and girls' empowerment, are at the core of our development program. USAID's vision is of a prosperous and peaceful world in which women and girls, men and boys, and gender diverse individuals enjoy equal rights and agency, have equitable access to quality education and health care accumulate and control their own assets, exercise their own voice, and live 
free from restrictive. Bangladesh, we're working closely with a wide range of key actors, including the host government, civil society, the donor community, the private sector, and the local organizations to ensure that the distinct and intersectional needs that women and girls, men and boys have in all their diversities are addressed meaningfully to foster the sustainability of results. We have much to learn today. So without further ado, let's start with our first presenter who will give us some background on this project. As you can see on the screen, Maroji Shabani is an adolescent sexual and reproductive health advisor at Save the Children, United States. With eight years of experience in adolescent and youth sexual and reproductive health, positive youth development and gender programming for adolescents, Maroji provides technical assistance and capacity strengthening for quality programming including facilitating program design and implementation of age and life stage tailor gender transformative and social and behavior change programs. She also supports ASRH programs in several countries across Sub-Saharan Africa and Asia. Meriji, over to you, please. Thanks so much, Lisa, and welcome everyone, hello. Um, as Lisa just mentioned, the program we're presenting on today was implemented under the Momentum Country and Global Leadership Project. And more specifically in Bangladesh, uh, the Momentum Project partnered with faith-based organizations to strengthen their capacity to design and implement gender transformative programming for very young adolescents between the ages of 10 and 14 years and their families. So there are a few reasons why the project chose to implement the activity. Firstly, it aligns with the project's mandate and USAID's youth policy. Also importantly, a key reason for this activity was to strengthen country leadership and capacity in age and life stage tailored adolescent health and gender programming. So thereby pushing us beyond a one size it's all approach as we move to localize adolescent health programming. We also aimed to generate evidence on how to implement age and life stage tailored programming. So pushing beyond the what and fostering a culture of ongoing learning and adaptation in adolescent health and gender programming. Next slide, please. Next slide. So before describing the activity, I think it will be helpful to understand the current situation and realities for very young adolescents in Bangladesh. Uh, firstly, early marriage remains very common in the country with approximately 22% of girls getting married before turning 15 years old. This in turn leads to early sexual debut and contributes to high rates of adolescent pregnancy. In fact, Bangladesh has one of the highest, or if not the highest, adolescent fertility rate in South Asia. Um, evidence shows that one in 10 girls gives birth before turning 15. Also, social and gender uh, norms are key barriers that heighten adolescent vulnerability, specifically by limiting adolescent girls' knowledge about their reproductive health, about puberty, in turn, link, this is linked to poor, poor social and health outcomes for adolescent girls and boys. However, despite these unfortunate realities, BYAs have been given very little attention in the country and there are very few tailored age appropriate programs targeting this population in Bangladesh. Next slide, please. Over the last decade or so, there has been increased attention on uh, the need to focus and prioritize BYs in gender and health programming. And um, that's for a number of reasons. And uh, evidence is clearly showing that um, early adolescents 
offers a critical window of time to intervene with VYAs to improve their health and gender outcomes. Very young adolescence is also considered to be one of the healthiest life stages in the time of significant physical, cognitive, and socio-emotional change. Early adolescence is also a time of social changes and a period of increasingly gendered experience and expectations where adolescents face pressure to conform to existing um, restrictive gender norms. And this is particularly more pronounced for adolescent girls. Next slide, please. So it's against this backdrop that the Momentum Country and Global Leadership Project partnered with two faith-based organizations in Bangladesh, Lamb Hospital and World Renew Bangladesh. And the goal of this was to strengthen their capacity in designing and implementing very young adolescent health and gender programming, and also to strengthen their overall organizational capacity and performance. So the goal was to build a model for how faith-based organizations and other community-based organizations in Bangladesh can implement similar VYA-targeted programming and contribute to advancing the implementation of the National Adolescent Health Strategy. So again, to repeat, there are two key components of this activity. The first one being to strengthen the faith-based faith -based organization's capacity to implement an evidence-based gender transformative uh, package for very young adolescents, their families, and communities. And the second piece of that being to develop the organization's capacity through the process of assessment and capacity action plan implementation, which my colleague will describe a bit uh, more in detail later on in the presentation. Next slide, please. So following a series of discussions and workshops with uh, the faith-based organizations, um, both partners chose uh, to adapt and apply Save the Children's Evidence-Based Choices, Voices, Promises Intervention Package. And this program uses a socio-ecological approach uh, to engage very young adolescents, parents, and community members to help improve gender equity and adolescent health outcomes uh, by catalyzing change, recognizing that behaviors and norms are influenced by a myriad of factors at the social, at the, at the individual level, as well as uh, at the community level. Uh, this program was first implemented and evaluated many years ago in Nepal and has since been uh, adapted and implemented in several countries. Uh, however, this is the first time the full package was adapted and implemented in Bangladesh. So to describe the intervention in a bit more detail, um, the package consists of three distinct uh, interventions or components. The first one is choices, and this program targets their young adolescents for attitude and behavior change related to gender norms. It uses a curriculum of age and developmentally appropriate activities, which are designed to be participatory and to stimulate discussion and reflection between VYA girls and boys with the goal of helping them to challenge restrictive norms and to promote healthy behaviors. The second intervention, which is a voices program, challenges existing beliefs and attitudes held by parents on restrictive gender roles while fostering inter intergenerational dialogue um, at the household level. So in this program, parents listen to audio testimonials or recorded stories from other parents or community members who have adopted positive behaviors um, that support gender equality within their homes. Um, so parents listen to these testimonials and are encouraged to uh, take part in a small group discussion, debate uh, on these matters, and um, really encouraged to practice the behaviors they've heard within their homes. Um, and also in some sessions, uh, the intervention includes activities which help parents to build skills such as being better, uh, being able to communicate better with their daughters and sons about gender and to practice some of the behaviors that they've heard in the stories shared by other parents. And then the third intervention, which is the promises approach, um, involves displaying 
uh, a series of six large posters within the community, which are uh, unveiled uh, sequentially, typically on a biweekly basis. Um, and the posters include behavior change messages um, that are placed on large community boards uh, to in strategic locations within the community to ensure that many members of the community are able to see it. Um, and the posters include messages uh, which are meant to stimulate dialogue within the community around shifting harmful norms. And um, at each unveiling session of the posters, a small group of uh, key community influencers are invited and they engage in discussion about the poster and then are asked to discuss the messages included in the poster within their social, social network to help diffuse the messages. Next slide, please. So both partners implemented the program in different regions in Bangladesh. Um, LAM, implement, LAM Hospital implemented the program in the north of the country in Dinajpur district, while World Renew works in the southern region of the country, so in Shatkira district. Um, implementation of the adapted program started in June 2021 and went through May 2022. There was a period in which program activities had to stop due to the nationwide COVID lockdown, but this was um, how long the program went for. So I will stop here and turn it back to you, Lisa, to introduce our next speakers and the next portion of the presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Maroji, for providing the setting of this activity. Uh, we'll now introduce our next speakers, Dr. Bapun Mankin, representing LAMP Hospital, and Shagota Chishim, who is representing World Renew Bangladesh. Dr. Bapun Mankin currently serves as the Director of the Community Health and Development Program at World Mission Prayer Leagues, also known as the LAMP Hospital. And he has been leading development projects under the LAMP Community Health Program, covering MSCH, and listen program waste management and disaster risk reduction in the northern parts of the, of the country. In his 16 years of development journey, he was mostly involved in health, education, livelihood, integrated nutrition, and disaster risk reduction, where youth were an important part. And our third speaker today, Shagota Chishim, is a capacity development manager for World Renew Bangladesh. She works with local partner organizations, local communities, and churches in programming that promote peace building and justice, trauma healing, as well as overall improving gender transformative practices in projects. Shabota was a co-manager of the gender transformative Very Young Adolescent program conducted with Momentum. In this role, she trained and supervised local staff and provided technical support to the local partner in implementation. Bapun and Shagoda will share their uh, organizational capacity building, their program reach and implementation learning with us today. Um, please remember to post your questions in the Q&A box along the way so we can discuss those after the presentation conclude. Now over to you Bapun and Shagoda. Thank you, Lija. Now, organizational capacity building of World Renew and LAMP for implementing gender transformative approach. World Renew and LAMP went through a capacity development process named ITOCA. So what's the ITOCA? ITOCA is the, I bought a tool and a facilitated process designed for organizations staff to self-score and collaboration to identify strengths, weakness, capac and capacity development needs, plan support needed by the partner by developing change action plans, monitor changes in organizational capacity through the implementation of plans and reassessment. PEC supported both organizations to conduct ITOCA and OPI assessment uh, PEG conducted baseline assessment prior to start of program implementation and will conduct end-line assessment. The purpose is to assess organizational capacity changes across predefined capacity area. This contributes 
to our learning questions on organizational capacity strengthening, key informant interviews. Next slide, please. Uh, LAMP and World Renew prioritize their capacity areas. After prioritization of capacity areas, both organizations did completion of five year strategic planning, development, and finalization of monitoring and evaluation plan, tools, and templates, finalization of resource mobilization strategy, development of gender based violence manual, and adapting for Bangladesh context. Next slide, please. The risk of participation in choice voice promises. Next slide, please. In the project lifetime, choices reach over 300 girls and boys across both intervention sites where attendance rates were very high. More women attended voices sessions and influential community leaders attended the promises sessions. Next slide, please. In this slide, you can see some photos of community celebrations, which were the concluding events of this program. It created space for the very young adolescents, their parents and community key leaders to come together and celebrate the changes. In these photos, the parents are marking their pledges to prioritize their children's health and education, mother and teachers sharing about their positive experiences. Very young adolescents stage drama with reflection equitable environment in their community. It was very exciting event celebrating the changes with hundreds of people. Next slide, please. Now, implementation learning questions. Main learning question, what lessons can be learned from the process of strengthening LAMP and World Renews technical and organizational capacity to implement gender transformative interventions for very young adolescents in Bangladesh? Sub areas of interest are, how was the choices, voices, promises, approach implemented and adapted? What's the unique role of abuse in supporting and implementing very young adolescent health interventions. How did the capacity development support benefits of abuse and the implementation of gender transformative approaches for the adolescents? Next slide, please. We use monitoring data and qualitative adaptive learning methodologies to gather implementation experiences, challenges, and insights, and to answer the key learning questions, especially we use a trailer implementation mapping tool, which is called IMT, to guide monthly reflective decisions and record changes made, made and challenges. To structure posts and reflect approaches, we help lesson learn meetings on a quarterly basis to reflect on factors and, and after review meeting upon conclusion of the implementations. Key informants interviews with community and faith leaders, local government authorities, staff from other local FPUs and NGOs. I took an OPI assessments, pre and post interventions to assess organizational capacity changes and major improvements in the technical and organizational capacity. Now I would like to request Shagota to continue the next slides. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bapun. Good morning and good evening, everyone. Uh, next, we will present selected learning from this program. Next slide, please. This is one of the learning questions of this program. How was choices, voices, and promises approach implemented and adapted? We will now present some selected learning based on this question. Next slide, please. This slide presents some selected learning from choices intervention. Both mixed and sex segregated approaches were used in choices and both approaches worked well. 
Lamb used sex segregated approach as it was more contextually appropriate for them to hold separate sessions for boys and girls. Adolescent facilitators reported that it enabled very young adolescents participation and easier facilitation. World Renew implemented choices with uh, girls and boys together. Mixed groups enabled deeper understanding of gender privileges and helped to promote positive changes in very young adolescents' gender-related beliefs and attitudes. Choices sessions blended theory with praxis, which provided very young adolescents opportunities to learn how to treat each other equally and learn from one another. Boys learned that they could use their power and privilege to support and advocate for their sisters. Choices lessons were facilitated by the older adolescents and very young adolescents could relate to them well. World Renew used mixed pairs of adolescent facilitators to help make the very young adolescents feel at ease. Both World Renew and LAM provided in-depth training on the choices curriculum and supported facilitators throughout implementation. Next slide, please. This slide presents learning from voices intervention Audio testimonials were liked and the stories shared resonated with the program participants. The testimonials inspired program participants to make changes and implement the positive gender behaviors the parents discussed. Parents expressed support for less traditional, more gender equitable roles and responsibilities in their family. And engaging very young adolescents through choices, intervention, and parents through voices simultaneously was important. The programs fostered engagement and facilitated sharing of gender information covered in the sessions and learning between adolescents and their parents. Voices sessions included some participatory parents' activities. Parents reported enjoying and benefiting from the activities. The activities opened up new ways of communication and contributed to improving parents' ability to discuss gender-related matters with their children. It also strengthened parental support for very young adolescents' participation in choices as uh, parents learned more about the topics discussed in choices. The take-home materials, which were the story cards, enabled parents to share the behaviors discussed in the sessions with family members, neighbors, and others in the community. We also used testimonies from the intervention that inspired parents to transform their gender behaviors and attitudes. These testimonies were pre-recorded with community members. Next slide, please. This slide presents selected learning from Promises Intervention. The posters were liked and moved to other places in the community, such as in schools, government spaces, to ensure the messages were seen more widely. The visuals and messages sparked a lot of interest and curiosity uh, within the community. Community members were able to engage in dialogue with other influential key community members, including religious leaders, social workers, and government officials during the Promises poster unveiling sessions. The community members have strong ties within the community, which was key to disseminating messages. Local government support was also a key in the success of the Promises intervention. The Union Council Chairman's Office gave World Renew permission to use their courtyard for the poster unveiling and discussion sessions. The courtyard was an ideal location to conduct the sessions because it is frequented by community members, thus enabling greater exposure to the posters and diffusion. Implementation team noted that parents, community members, and uh, leaders placed their commitment to promote well-being of their children and ensure very young adolescents complete their education before marriage. Next slide, please. Here are some of the key adaptations that we made through, our, through implementation learning. One of the challenges was age dynamics among very young adolescents, which contributed to varied level of participation. Older adolescents tended to dominate discussions and participate more than uh, younger, very young adolescents. 
in response to this challenge, implementation teams worked with uh, adult volunteers and adolescent facilitators to improve engagement of younger varying adolescents, encouraging them to speak up and uh, share opinions during sessions. Limited knowledge on gender programming of the older adolescents who served as the choices facilitators was, was, were also, was also a challenge. Gender concepts got more complex for them as the choices sessions progressed. In response to these, implementation teams provided additional support to adolescent facilitators to improve their understanding, address any biases, and increase the, their skills and comfort with facilitating discussions around uh, complex gender concepts. It was also challenging to get the fathers to attend the sessions because the intervention coincided with uh, the harvesting season. As an adaptation, implementation teams adjusted the timing of the group discussion um, to facilitate male attendance by rescheduling in the afternoon or in the evening, however, challenges persisted. LAM implemented voices with sex segregated and mixed groups. In the mixed groups, women rarely contributed to the discussions because they did not feel comfortable sharing their views in front of other um, men or of their partners. Facilitators encouraged women to speak up and share their views. However, women's engagement remained limited. Poor facilitation skill of the community facilitators was also a challenge. The union council member who was initially selected to facilitate World Renews Promises sessions was not equipped and did not feel comfortable leading the group discussion with high level government officials. So World Renew replaced the union council member with a teacher after the first session, the teacher received a training and co-facilitated the group sessions with the World Renews Project Coordinator. Next slide, please. This is another learning questions of this, uh, uh, of this uh, program. What is the unique role of faith-based organizations in implementing very young adolescents' health and gender intervention? Now we will present selected learning based on this question. Next slide, please. So here are some of our learning from faith-based perspectives. World Renew and LAM are properly equipped to implement community-based programming. Both World Renew and LAM drew from experiences working with adolescent groups uh, to adapt and implement uh, the program. Both organizations are well positioned to reach a range of diverse influential community members and stakeholders to instill and reinforce uh, healthy and equitable practices. Both these organizations are trusted and have long-standing relationships in the community and with government entities, which created a supportive environment and consistent backing of program activities. These organizations also leveraged uh, their deep connections within the community to identify program participants and inform implementation decisions. In addition, World Renew and LAM used their peer faith networks uh, to obtain approval for community level activities and mobilize support to promote very young adolescents, sexual and reproductive health and gender equality. World Renew and LAM also place a strong emphasis on leadership building and mentorship. Next slide, please. Another learning question was how did the capacity development support benefit the faith-based organizations and the implementation of gender transformative approaches for adolescents? Next slide, please. Tailored organizational capacity strengthening through ITOCA supported World Renew and LAM to implement the gender transformative very young adolescent approach. Trainings, coaching, and material support through ITOCA helped both organizations gain capacity and confidence to implement gender transformative approaches. Strengthening organizational processes and systems built organizational staff capacity, which translated to stronger implementation of choices, voices, and promises approach in communities. Developing five-year strategic and operations plans ensure that gender transformative approaches will remain a priority and continue to be strengthened. Both World Renew and LAM are planning to build on successes and integrate the choices, voices, and promises approach within uh, their uh, programming. 
implementation learning activities used throughout the program facilitated ongoing reflection and analysis of information contributing to strengthening world renew and lamps capacity to apply and generate uh, learning across uh, their work now i would like to hand over uh, to my colleague meroji sebani uh, to present the concluding slides Thank you, Shagota. Um, next slide, please. So to wrap up, uh, we just wanted to leave you with a few reflections and um, some key takeaways from our experience applying the Choices, Voices, Promises approach in Bangladesh. Um, firstly, we saw that gender transformative approaches um, that foster change across all levels of the socio-ecological model were really key to create a supportive environment for change and also to reinforce the intervention topics and goals that were covered in each of the three uh, interventions. The activity also provides a key lesson around the need to continue to increase the capacity of local partners, including faith-based organizations to design adapt and implement BYA focused uh, programs that engage families as well as community members. Um, so strengthening SBOs and other local partners, technical and organizational capacity, and then connecting them with systems, uh, we see it as being the way forward within the context of localization. We also would like to acknowledge that uh, capacity development really takes time and requires dedicated funding from donors, especially for complex approaches, uh, which aim to sh shift deeply rooted social and gender norms. So a lot, uh, a longer implementation period and time is needed to see real impact. Also, we saw that um, using the adaptive management approach has really helped us to foster a culture of learning within the organization and also to um, gather feedback in real time and make changes uh, during the implementation period. And then finally, um, it's important to look at how we can embed similar approaches like choices, voices, promises in community systems through engaging local partners, but also in other uh, sectors, including health, education, and other government systems to ensure or to facilitate uh, sustainability and scalability of similar programming. Um, so I'll stop here and uh, go turn it back to you, Lisa. Thank you uh, to all the speakers for your excellent presentation and also for sharing all the lessons of the great work that you have done. So we are now open up to questions. Um, I see we have already received some questions uh, from our audience members. Uh, please continue to put your questions in the Zoom Q&A box and the team will try to answer them as best uh, as we can. Okay, so for our first question, um, it's from, it's from Dawood Alum and He's asking if the speakers can uh, also describe the coverage. Uh, what was the coverage for the entire intended uh, audience? Uh, he has another question, so I'm gonna uh, tag that along with the first one. So uh, you, could you please also highlight which norm is easy to influence? So over to you, um, Bapun uh, Shagota and Meroji, whether you can take, any of you can take this question for him. Maybe I can invite our World Renew and LAM colleagues to talk about uh, the reach of the program and um, the audience. Yes, um, in terms of coverage, this program actually covered uh, or reached to First of all, uh, at the individual level to the very young adolescents, we are the 10 to 14 years old, and also their parents, uh, uh, all the parents whose children were uh, in choices, all the parents were co covered through the voices 
which uh, which the crisis uh, intervention which was for the parents and also in the uh, third layer we did uh, the promises intervention which covered the key influential community leaders so the key influential community leaders includes uh, religious leader local government uh, authorities um, school teachers uh, social workers um, and other women leaders, health, uh, health, uh, health staff, all those uh, key community influencers. So it, this program actually covered um, the all three levels: individual level, family level, and the community level. Yes. Yeah. If if we think the geographical area, then. In our Bangladesh, we call it sub district. That means two sub districts in different dis uh, districts, and we cover four unions through two organizations. So, a second part of his question was which norm was uh, easy to influence based on your experience? Would anyone like to share on that question? um actually we we had a specific we used the curriculums for choices we used uh, specific curriculums which had uh, specific themes and also for voices we the voices also focused on six specific behaviors so the six specific specific behaviors for voices were um, like um, gender equitable division of household tasks and also equal homework time for both uh, daughter and sons, equal food for bo both boys and girls, and encouraging daughters as well as sons to attend school, commitment to not discuss uh, daughter's marriage, um, and equally bring hopes to girls and boys. These were the six specific behaviors that uh, focused through the voices uh, intervention, and parents listened to audio testimonials of the parents who are already practicing these behaviors, these norms, and then they had a discussion around these behaviors and norms. And they, the parents, actually find these behaviors, these norms, uh, appropriate for them. Um, these were actually, I mean, the parents shared with us that they have learned about gender uh, programs, gender they need to uh, treat their girls and boys equally. But this program, that this this specific uh, behavior, the specific uh, these uh, behaviors actually help them to identify where is the gaps in their households, where they need to um, bring changes, or I mean, what are the actions, small, small, still very effective action they can take to treat um, their daughters and sons equally. So these were the specific behaviors, the voices um, uh, actually uh, from uh, intervention focused, and parents were really influenced by these norms, by these behaviors, and they applied this uh, this learning in their family level, in their uh, um, with their children. Yeah, uh, Bapun might want to add more, or Meruji might want to add more. Yeah, and just uh, thank you, Shrigal. So just to add to that, um, I think it's not easy to shift norms, but we did see that you know. Uh, Bangladesh does provide a very fertile ground now to see some sh changes in behavior um, that are supportive of um, positive gender behaviors and uh, positive attitudes within families. So we did see through this program that parents were more willing to change their more traditional views on how they treat their daughters and sons. Uh, things around uh, allowing uh, daughters to attend school, uh, not mentioning marriage until uh, daughters completed school. So we did see a positive change in that area, but I wouldn't say we shifted any norms. Like uh, like we mentioned throughout the presentation, that takes time and more intense um, programming. But we are seeing, uh, we did see through this program that um, this willingness to change attitudes and behavior. Okay, so moving to the next question, um, if you were to go, uh, if you, if you were going to recommend implementing this to uh, another organizations, what would you say was the hardest part about implementing this method, and what was the most rewarding part of implementing this program?
So um, what was the hardest part and what was the most rewarding one? Uh, to start with the hardest part, um, actually we didn't face that much difficulties because we implemented this program in, in the areas where we already um, have been implementing other programs. So we had a we had a good relationship with uh, at the community level and also with the government. Uh, there was that uh, because of that we did not have much uh, difficulties engaging with the communities and with the government. And we had a good support from the community level as well as from the government, which actually enabled us to implement this program smoothly. But still, uh, I would say that um, this program, uh, Choices versus Promises, was new for us for World Review. This uh, we it was actually for us to learn about this program uh, with the support of MCGL, Save the Children, and uh, CCIH. So we did not have uh, any clear understanding of how to how to do it, how to implement it. Especially, there were lots of steps. Um, Choices was easier for us because choices, uh, we had adolescent programs and we use uh, peer educators, ad uh, adolescent educators. So it was easy for us to implement the choices uh, with the uh, with the uh, very young adolescents. But for the voices, we needed to um, record the uh, uh, audio testimonials, parents' testimonials, and also for the promises, using the posters, using the appropriate messages and uh, images, contextualizing those from the Nepal context to Bangladesh context. Those were a bit, for us, it was a learning process. We learned a lot um, and we adapted this, um, this intervention or this uh, mechanism to our context. So it was for us a learning by doing, with the constant support guidance from uh, MCGL and Save the Children and CCIH. And rewarding was actually lots of rewarding um, to see how the varying adolescents, they, they enjoyed um, the choices lessons. They, they enjoyed the activities, the lessons, and um, the feedback we received from them that how they are applying these at their families. These were rewarding, and also to see the community leaders how they are, um, how they are, uh, how they engaged with the program. It was kind of a uh, kind of a movement at the individual level, family level, and community level, engaging all of them together. So to see these things uh, to promote. Uh, the girls and boys education and health at the at the community in all level of the community i think it was rewarding for us okay um yeah. lamb want to add anything to it yeah and yeah another thing actually we experienced during our program implementation that was the uh, changing male and female together and and you may find during our presentation and in the uh, mixed group. It was very tough to make speak out the uh, women uh, when they were uh, joining together in one session. Since we need to uh, change together, that means both gender will be uh, gender will be transformed. That means male and men and others. Because so we found when we were using the testimonial. That testimonial actually uh, collected from their uh, real life. They were realizing about their life, especially the women. So actually it was a uh, little difficult to change uh, women and men together. And that's mean the uh, engagement of male. Uh, if we can, conduct easily or it, it we can it make it easy in the community uh, together for men and women it will be actually very helpful for community even it may bring more impact okay thank you so moving on to the next question um, were the training materials and posters translated into many of the languages spoken in Bangladesh or just the majority language Yeah, the materials were translated into the majority language, the Bangla, because our audiences, our community people were Bengali people, and all of them understood Bangla well. So we translate the materials into Bangla, and we just um, made the, the language a bit easier, uh, understandable for the community people. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. So um, how do you select parents to be engaged in supporting very young adolescents? So, 
So it was actually easy to select the parents because uh, we prioritized the parents whose children are in choices because we wanted wanted that both parents and children are uh, parents to be engaged in the intervention. So I mean. But we had a lot of popularity of the program, so more parents were interested to join the voices intervention, but we needed to make it a, a strict kind of a policy that only the parents of uh, only the parents whose children are choices can uh, join the voices. So selecting the parents was we had a criteria that parents of the choices, very young adults and girls and boys will um, I, uh, will participate in voices. Uh, Lam, you want to add anything to it? Actually, we uh, use the same approach for both, both program area uh, for the females. And another imp important was uh, since we need to change the adolescents and their families, that, that's why uh, it was related to the choices sessions, adolescent and their parents. Yeah. Even 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 we had learning that uh, when we went in different meetings or other things, then then we found that both their their children and also their their parents are becoming uh, changed. Okay, all right. Thank you. So the next question is about: um, Could you kindly? elaborate more on the selection of group leaders. Um, were young people recruited to lead the groups? Also, did you experience backlash or resistance from community members? And if so, how was this mitigated? Uh, regarding selecting the younger people, actually for choices intervention with the varying adolescents, the leaders or the facilitators were the older adolescents. So the older ad adolescents age range was from uh, 16 to 17, 16, 17, yeah, yeah, those. Age. So young people were engaged and uh, we, our experience, from our experience, we learned that the very adolescents were, uh, were able to relate well with them. And they were kind of a peer support. The older adolescents worked as a peer support for the younger adolescents because they also they were also from the same socioeconomic uh, status and also they had the same experience social social uh, from different kinds of um, challenges. They also explained the ch social challenges and um, difficulties, which, uh, which um, I mean, they could share with the varying adolescents and support the varying adolescents when they also had the same kind of challenges. So younger people were involved in the program. And another question was whether we have uh, experienced any black backlash from the community. Backlash or yeah, any, any resistance from the community as you were recruiting young, uh, younger people uh, elderly adolescents for, uh, you know, as the group leaders. Yeah, in terms of recruiting younger uh, people as the leaders, no, we didn't uh, face any backlashes because we already had this practice using the uh, PR educator uh, for the adolescent people, younger adolescent people. And overall for the program, we actually didn't face any backlash from the community people, but we really experienced a uh, huge support from the community as well as from the from the uh, government local government community people accepted the program well they 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 find this program useful and beneficial for them okay thank you so um, what are the ideas for a unique apo contribution to improving mothers and fathers communication since um, the parents seem to have more difficulties with mixed group compared to VIS. So I guess some of the space of the question was already answered, but uh, if any speaker can elaborate a little more on that. Um, in terms of mixed group, yes, um, in World Renews in World Renews Adolescent Program, we normally use separate groups for boys and girls. But, but for this program, 
um, we were suggested that how about we try bringing boys and girls together and world you know really pushed on this idea and we tried to do it so uh, but the uh, our audience are very young adolescents, so parents are uh, concerned about their safety and security. So what we did is we uh, formed the groups in close proximity, where the people already know each other, and they are with their friends and cousins, and also we had adult volunteers present in the in the discussions in the in the sessions. Uh, our coordinators, so adolescents were not alone there but older adult people were there, also parents, if they want, they could watch what is happening, what they are discussing. So it, it wasn't a problem for us to bring the uh, bearing adolescents, boys and girls together. In terms of parents, um, it wasn't a problem for us to bring the uh, men and women together because uh, these parents also kind of a, this is a discussion. So uh, these parents also uh, participate in uh, government meetings with other men, the women uh, attend meetings with men. So they are kind of a used to uh, with these kind of discussions. But what we needed to do is for men, for women to participate in a discussion is we may make sure that the, there are women facilitators. So when the women saw that the women facilitators are there, women facilitator is leading the discussion, they felt encouraged and they also participated in discussion. So it was a bit a uh, problem, but but we were able to bring men and women together and also uh, the facilitators paid special attention to the women uh, participants so that they can also participate and discuss and share their views Okay, um, so I guess this this is going to be our last question for today as we're running out of time. So the question is, when talking about faith-based partners, uh, is emphasis put on Christian-based or even others such as Muslim faith-based ones? So anybody would like to take this question? So it's asking whether when we're taking talking about faith-based partners, whether it, it the emphasis is only on Christian-based or it can also be a Muslim-based ones. So for our experience in Bangladesh, uh, we worked with Lama and World New, who are both Christian uh, faith-based organizations. Um, but I. I think the important thing here is that both partners had really strong community ties and longstanding relationships uh, within the areas they work in. So yes, it was good to have the faith-based uh, background, uh, specifically as a Christian organization, but I do think the learnings would have been similar had we worked with a Muslim a faith-based partner. I think the key here, like I mentioned, was the fact that both partners were well-known by community members, well-trusted, and um, really had, um, you know, had been working in these areas and had a strong reputation. Um, so they were, you know, deemed as being um, a, a very acceptable way uh, or an, uh, an acceptable partner to be sharing or uh, leading programming around sensitive matters like gender and uh, adolescent health. Thanks, Maroji. So we are almost at the end of our webinar today. Um, there were some additional questions which we could not take today, but the team will follow up with those via email. Um, before we close, uh, will any speakers be willing to make a one sentence closing statement? Yeah, for us, for World Renew, it has been a rewarding journey. Uh, we are thankful to MCGL, USAID, CCIH, and Save the Children for this opportunity to learn this evidence-based gender transformative approach. And we hope to continue <coughs> to use this approach and tools uh, that we learned with additional community communities. And we believe we also believe that this program will sustain at the field also to the very young adolescents, their parents, and community leaders. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all uh, for this opportunity. So I hope, I... please go ahead. Okay, so um, 
thanks uh, Bapon, thanks Fagota and Meroji. So we hope uh, you found this session thought provoking and you can use some of the lessons learned and resources to inform your own country programs. Momentum would like to hear your thoughts on the webinar and following to get your options opinions on box to tell us one thing you have to say then on behalf of the organizers i'll include this webinar today thank you bye